Welcome to our second session of Revive at Five. We hope that this is an opportunity to rest and reflect and renew after a long day of work and homeschooling in lockdown. A special welcome to Father Michael Cord, who will read and reflect upon today's gospel, and to Cheryl Fernandez and John Burland, who will share reflections from Mary McKillop. So a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Mary to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother or sister does something wrong, go and have it out with them alone between your two selves. If they listen to you, you have won back your brother or sister. If they don't listen, take one or two others along with you. The evidence of two or three witnesses is required to sustain any charge. But if they refuse to listen to these, report it to the community. And if they refuse to listen to the community, treat them like a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you most solemnly, whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. And I tell you solemnly once again, if two of you on earth agree to ask anything at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Lord Jesus Christ. So good afternoon or good evening, everyone. And um, it's a privilege to be here and to uh, be present to you. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to say thank you to all the leaders in Sydney Catholic School and all people involved in Sydney Catholic School for all you do for our young people. As a Salesian, my heart is uh, very biased towards young people. And so I'm so grateful for all the others who are are helping our young people in whatever capacity you're involved. And thank you for being a sign and bearer of God's love uh, for the young. So I'm invite, being invited to sort of make some reflection, uh, like a little well in the desert of our struggles at this time. And I thought to myself, wow, the reading I've been given is pretty heavy, so to speak, on a on an evening after a long day and even midweek. And yet, when I stop and think about it, if we're involved as leaders, this reading is talking about things that happen to us all the time. All the time we're, we're, we're struggling with um, interacting with others and the requirement in those interactions to uh, face the struggles sometimes, the difficult conversations, that are important if we're here to, to, I know, to deal well in our, our different roles and if we're to be authentic witnesses of Christ. Now, you know, sometimes whenever I have a, a reading which I struggle to do, I sort of almost want to find another way around it. And, and, I, and I know this reading is not easy for me. Uh, I'm a people pleaser, and so to confront people in when it needs to happen is something that I personally really struggle with, and I've uh, reflected upon this deeply, and I hear the call of the gospel to do it, and I hear, and I know in practice that it makes such a difference if we're able to um, deal with situations. You know, when I'm having struggles with someone because of some situation, do I build a bridge with that person? Do I sometimes, I probably operate out of a wall of indifference with that person and just sort of almost hope that it'll go away? Or do I sometimes even create a situation that creates a moat of separation between us because of some inappropriate way in which I deal with the situation? And so I try to listen to God's word. I try to listen, you know, my natural, my natural inclination is to build a wall of indifference. 
and just hope it goes away. And yet I hear the challenge of the gospel. And, and I've tried to wrestle with this uh, at many levels in many situations. And, and I can't uh, sort of unfold with you for in five minutes um, some of the things that have helped me to respond to this gospel passage. Apart from pointing out uh, a very, very helpful book that I once read, it's called Difficult Conversations. And it's a, a Harvard Business School analysis of, of this reality. And I just point out, I'll just give you one of the points that it makes in that book that has helped me to respond to this gospel, to do try to put it, try to deal with some difficult situations. You know, there's three levels that a difficult conversation happens with. If we're willing to do what Jesus says and go and speak to our brother or sister, then I think it's so important that we know this, these three levels. We all know the situation, number one, what happened, whatever the issue is. And some people are just locked into the issue. And if you're just locked into the issue, then you're not going to get very far because underneath the issue are the feelings that we have about the, whatever the the incident is or whatever the issue is we're concerned with. And so most of us, um, it doesn't take very long to learn that you must also address the feelings of the other. And sometimes feelings are like wax in the ear or wax in the heart anyway. And, and if you do not um, listen and empathize with their feelings, you will never get to the issue of what really happened or what's the real issue. And I can remember learning that little insight of the importance of feelings and, and realizing, great, now this will help. And I remember I had a difficult conversation that I needed to have with someone that was, I was, that was working with us. And there I went in thinking, great, I know what I'll do. I'll make sure I listen to this person's feelings. And then, and then there's many other things, but that was one of the most important. And it was a disaster. It was just like an atom bomb blowing up. And I went away frustrated and angry and the other person went away angry. And, and I couldn't work out, you know, why, what did I miss? What was not, what, 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 what did I fail to understand? And the number one thing that this book told me that was present, and I, I believe it's so important and a lot of people don't realize this, we've got the what happened, We've got the feelings and underneath that is identity. Who am I? Am I significant? Am I valuable? And so, you know, if we're really going to try to put into practice this gospel, we need to start with identity. You need to, when you confront another person on some, an important issue, we begin by being aware of their sense of their own identity. And we need to affirm that identity and listen, uh, see them as a child of God. And I know I need to ground myself in my own identity as a child of God, not dependent on the opinions of that other person or, or, or anybody else watching on whatever is happening. And so the little, I know, little thing that I hope would help you is to apply this gospel is those three points and begin with identity, begin with affirming the other person's identity and watch that. As soon as the other person feels like they're losing their sense of identity, they will defend that at all costs and not even hear what you're talking about in terms of the issue. And after we've heard, uh, grounded our own identity and their identity, then we listen to feelings. The feelings um, guide, they're, they're a guide. And then we can start dealing with the issue. So there's so, much other, so many other things, but I think if we don't deal uh, with this, uh, these difficult conversations with a lot more depth, uh, we will never really have any chance of putting into practice uh, what Jesus is sharing with us.
I know many of you have been involved in many difficult conversations and probably you've got good wisdom that you could share with me and, and with each other so that we can authentically uh, practice this gospel passage. I finish off just pointing out how, um, you know, whenever we listen to God's word, I, I sort of have three things in my mind. I have a love for God's word. When I say I have a love for God's word, I have a love for the person that the Bible reveals, who is Jesus and our God. I have a love for the story uh, around in which it's being presented. And I always have a love for the truth that the Bible is sharing with us. So I hope there's something there for you. And once again, thank you and God bless you in all you're doing uh, for our young people. Thank you so much, Father Mick, for reminding us about difficult conversations and courageous conversations and someone else who also did this and had love for truth was Mary McKillop. On Sunday, we celebrated the feast day of Mary McKillop and we are reminded that she's Australia's first saint. In October 2010, she became known as St Mary of the Cross. But what does a woman who died 112 years ago have to do with us in 2021? Will Mary McKillop allow the promptings of God to guide her life? I'm offered to swap places with her. I'm still waiting for a response. She took quiet time to pause and reflect. She took time to find meaning in the ordinary and extraordinary events of her life. She took time to find the joys and sorrows of life. She took time to believe in the whisperings of God in her own heart. Sue and Leo Keane have written a book about Mary McKillop's spirituality in our everyday lives. It is called the Little Brown Book. It is a book that allows us to stop, pause and reflect. A book that can challenge our way of thinking. An excerpt from the book, page 54. The beauty of silence and surrender. Who am I to stand in God's way? Mary McKillop said in 1867. Sometimes the babble and clatter of life can swamp our spirits. Who doesn't fall prey occasionally to the pull of the mundane, the glitter of false expectations, the tide of busyness around us? It's not easy to grasp that things are not always as they, as they seem. In fact, at times, we can lose the plot and focus on little illusionary gods of our own. So we need to create oases of silence throughout our day to keep us in touch with what is real. Otherwise, as Mary points out, we can allow the whispers of God's voice to be snuffed out within us. Trust in the Lord and enjoy security. Mary McKillop loved to write letters and journals. One way we can pause and reflect on our own lives is through a journal, and now more than ever, a gratitude journal to focus on the blessings. Someone who inspired me on the weekend was Australian Olympian Nicola McDermott, who won a silver medal in the high jump. At every jump, she took time to stop, pause and reflect in her journal, to not allow negative thoughts to get her down. My favourite saying is, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. 
Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Let us be reminded to stay focused on the present moment. One of the small pleasures of lockdown has been the purchase of our daily coffee. This simple pleasure brings some light to our day and gives a moment to savour and just be. These simple moments can allow gratitude to enter our hearts, even for the simplest parts of our day. Our COVID walks have become part of our daily routine. An opportunity to soak up the sights and sounds of our local area. These walks provide us opportunities to reflect on God's creation and bask in it. Places that we once took for granted have enabled us to appreciate what we have before us. How many of us remember this morning that we live in the most beautiful city in the world, Sydney. During lockdown, we see and hear them more than ever, having those difficult and courageous conversations. But how wonderful it is to be part of a family. Part of the Sydney Catholic Schools family. part of the Catholic family. How many of us remembered today to be still and listen to God? How many of us wrote in our journals or will start tomorrow? There is a desk calendar with daily thoughts from Mary McKillop. Today, on the 11th of August, it reads, God's love is too deep for words to express. I now invite you to think about your day and your many blessings as I hand over to my colleague, John Burland, who will sing his song, Lord bless me on this day. Lord bless me on this day, God. 
been your way calm my mind to be and let my eyes now see surround me surround me surround me with your love when I wander far from you be with me oh Lord when I don't know what to do be with me oh Lord Lord bless me on this day God be in your way and calm my mind to be and let my eyes now see surround me surround me surround me with your love when I'm weary from the day be with me oh Lord when I haven't lived your way be with me oh Lord Lord bless me on this day guide me in your way and calm my mind to be and let my eyes now see surround me surround me surround me with your love Lord surround me with your Mary McKillop was someone who put others' needs before herself. As we join in prayer, I invite you to think of someone in your home, school, work, community, who needs your prayers at this time. As we say together, ever generous God, you inspired St. Mary McKillop to live her life faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ and constant in bringing hope and encouragement to those who were disheartened, lonely or needy. With confidence in your generous providence and through the intercession of St. Mary MacKillop, we ask that you grant our request to open our hearts to God and be present to those we love. We ask that our faith and hope be fired afresh by the Holy Spirit so that we too, like Mary McKillop, may live with courage, trust, and openness. Ever generous God, hear our prayer. We make this through Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Revive at Five again today, and we look forward to seeing you the same time next week. A huge thank you to Father Michael Court and to Cheryl Fernandez and John Berland for their beautiful reflection and gospel this afternoon. Stay safe and well. See you next week.